Hey, good morning. It's uh, snowing outside. So I'm down here in my basement wood shop, and I was going to talk a little bit about uh, rotary phase converters and the early days. <laughs> um, one of the things about it, like, um, uh, I know a fellow that just found a uh, a Kearney and Trucker mill at a junkyard. Now, I mean, this thing's got everything with it. It's a bigger mill, uh, number three. And I think it's uh, 15 horsepower, he said. And I, I think they can even go up to 30 horse on a number three mill. I don't know. But he was looking at rotary phase converters and a price of a 15 horse one is like, you know, well over a thousand dollars. And I was poking around and even a 10 horse uh, rotary phase converter starts at one thousand dollars. So if you find a good deal on a machine, you know, like I did on uh, the milling machine I'm working on or, you know, any old machine, you get the thing for four or five hundred bucks, and then you're looking at uh, over a thousand dollars to power it. And you know, there are, there are ways you can get by. And uh, I have some interesting observations on on these things too. And I've used static converters. Uh, I've uh, I've used everything but a commercially made rotary converter. Uh, I I don't have uh, any experience really with the uh, uh, phase perfect digital phase converter, but I have some interesting observations from others regarding that. So okay. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start off and talk about the most inexpensive, and I, I happen to have the best one that I ever used. Uh, it, it's uh, something that Grizzly uh, sells, but it burned out on me. <laughs> and that, that might be typical, but I know why this one burned out. This is a GWM Autogen, and it's a... Uh, uh, three to seven horse, and it came with this table saw here, this uh, old uh, Rockwell, uh, Delta Rockwell 1214 has a five horse, three phase motor, and the fellow that owned it before me bought this, and, and the reason it failed was I started the machine and not realizing that we kind of had a brown out here. And it gives a uh, minimum voltage of 190. But I, I know when I hit the switch, just as I was hitting the switch, the lights dimmed and this thing went out. And I'll send it back to them and get it fixed or something because this one worked real well. It had a, a soft start. You know, but I, I can't recommend this for uh, like a metal cutting machine tool, but I, I'll tell you, it, it worked great on this five horsepower uh, table saw, which, you know, doesn't have uh, extremely high starting loads like a lathe or something. So that's that. I've used quite a few of these. Okay, now... I'll take the camera loose and I'll show you what I'm using. It's, it's kind of amusing it uh, anyway, but it works. Okay, here we go. Now, oh, um, let me get over here. I have to have a drink of coffee. It is still early. Hmm. Okay, I get a little bit hoarse. Now, this is what I'm using for a for a, a rotary phase converter. And th if this ain't the darndest contraption, and what it actually is, <laughs> is a, uh, <clears throat> it's a motor generator out of an early Monarch 10 E. And I don't know if I can get a light in there into where the commutator is and rotate it. Okay, right in there. Rotate it up a little bit. The the generator part of this, see, it's a little out of balance and it's creeping up. I uh, 
uh, put a patch of epoxy glue uh, right here just to keep the windings from coming undone because this is the direct current end of the generator. You can see a hole there maybe that I didn't patch, but it's starting to unwind. So all I'm using out of this, this is, I removed the brush holders and everything. So all I'm really using is at this end is the direct, um, <clears throat> I mean the three phase motor end. It's like a dual armature. So just forget that's on there. And this is just a three phase motor of about uh, seven horsepower, okay? Now, I've used this for years and years, and uh, just because I'm cheap, right? This came with my Monarch 10 double E, but the old one. But I also uh, got a, a rebuilt or a new generator with it. Now, what I did when I first started using this is uh, there's normally a pulley here that I replaced with this piece of metal so I wouldn't get my pant leg caught in it. But what I used to do, I would wrap a rope around the pulley and give it a pull, then reach up to the bulldog switch and hit it, and then it starts. It's running now, but um, to keep from having to pull it with the rope, I, uh, uh, Bought this uh, Cedarburg static phase converter. It's seven and a half to ten horsepower, so I had to pull one of the uh, uh, capacitors out. And this came as a kit form. And I looked, and I don't know if they sell that anymore, but you can buy the same thing in kit form on eBay about $200. I think I paid $125 for that, you know, 25 years ago. Okay, so that's what I'm using to start this. And it's running. And it runs pretty smooth, you know, this is a precision balance motor. So it's pretty, it's pretty smooth. It's actually quieter than the commercial ones. So in the old days, you could take just any um, three-phase motor and uh, hook it up and you hook your machines off uh, the three wires here, okay? Then you just have your single phase going to it and uh, if you flip the switch, it'll just buzz. So that's why you have to pull it with a rope to get it going. And all these static phase converters do is give a shot to that third winding, okay, and get this thing going. And that's how single phase motors work too. They have the capacitor built onto it. So um, you can get by really cheaply when it comes right down to it if you're willing to start it with a rope. But you know, you don't, you know, you pull it, the, pull it with a rope and get that thing rotating, then hit the switch. You know, you don't want to get yourself wrapped up with a rope and a running motor, you know. And you got to be careful of a running motor. You get your pant leg caught in, it'll pull your pants off real quick. So, um, that's what I have done. So, you know, in reality, if you, if you found a four, um, a $400 milling machine at the junkyard. You could buy a three-phase motor at the local one here. It's about five bucks per horsepower. And then instantly be able to power your machine. But adding uh, uh, the static phase converter makes starting it easy, see? But they got that, they got that part on eBay, it was something like uh, $209 for a 10 horsepower, okay? So, you know, you can build your own, uh, let me move back and get the whole thing in there. See, you, you can build your own setup, um, you know, just for a couple hundred bucks, under $250, one quarter of the price, to, you know, to get going. Now, now, this is really an interesting thing about this. Now, 
we've got smart meters here now. And uh, what people have found is so smart meters charge, charge you heavily for um, inrush, you know, for starting motors and stuff that uh, inrush of electricity, they charge a triple for. So every time you start your uh, leg or milling machine or whatever, you're going to get charged extra. But we found that these rotary phase converters absorb that and it, that inrush doesn't show up on the smart meter. So you can be smarter than the smart meter. Now one thing that was found too is the phase perfect doesn't fool the smart meter. And I know one shop that uh, uh, sold their phase perfect and put back in the 50 horsepower. <laughs> <laughs> rotary phase converter because they couldn't afford uh, the electricity from that inrush charge. Okay, uh, I can't think of a whole lot more to say on this, but this is the, the, my table saw I run down here. And uh, here's my uh, spindle molder. This thing is seven and a half horse. I'll hit the button. <laughs> 8,000 RPMs there. How about that? Okay, bye.